What if instead of seeing notes as a chore, you had a system that allowed them to serve you in reaching your reading goals? Because that's exactly what this system does. And you can apply it to your reading today, whether you write notes, whether you don't write them at all, or whether you have your own system already. It's a principle that will just elevate them and make them better. This note-taking system achieves two main things. It allows you to understand the book better, which already is enough for most readers, but it also does something special. And this is something that was missing from my life. And once I found this, I was overjoyed because it actually allows you to create new ideas from the ones you read in your books. Now, I don't know if you relate to that, but I used to read a lot and I hated how I couldn't seem to come up with my own ideas. I would read newsletters, blog posts, books from people and all these people I admired and they had such amazing, seemingly new ideas. They were all fresh and exciting and profound and they made you think. And I could never do the same thing. And I thought, why? Why is that? Why can't I seem to come up with new ideas? And that's the precise thing this note-taking system will solve. This system allows you to combine ideas that seemingly are separate at first, but as you mix them together, you create this new thing, this novel idea that no one else has seen before because it's two unique perspectives coming together to make an even more unique perspective. This note-taking system involves two types of notes and the first are literature notes. And luckily for you, you're probably already doing them already. This is where you read through the book as normal. You take notes of the ideas that stood out to you. Not everything, because you don't care about everything, but you read and anything that interests you, anything that hits hard or resonates, you write down. And you write down preferably in your own words. And I want to stress that, in your own words. It could be major points from nonfiction, ideas that you should walk away with and remember. It could be things like punchy quotes or nicely written sentences that just kind of hammer home the message. Or it could be ideas from fiction, things that the characters do that make you think and make you reflect. Or even just what you felt while reading. That's valid in itself. That's something that inspires thinking. I'll show you how that process looks, but first I just want to really stress the importance of writing your own words. If there's one tip, if there's one piece of advice for improving your reading, it's that. It's you have to write in your own words. It's probably the single best thing you can do for your reading. Because for that tiny investment of your effort into using your own words in your notes, you gain so much benefit in return and it's really amazing. And there's actually three main advantages to doing that. The first benefit is that you're forced to think. Because when we have ideas in our head, they often sound good. They often sound like they make sense. But the second we try and express them, we are lost for words. It sounds like a jumble, it doesn't come out properly. And we're, it's kind of embarrassing. I'm sure this happened to you. It's happened to me a million times. But writing is the, the express solution to that. Because when you put it onto paper, you're essentially checking yourself before you have to write an essay on it or talk to someone about it. Writing notes in our own words is how we arrange that thinking and make it make sense to us. The second benefit, and this kind of ties into the first, but the second benefit is that you check if you understand the ideas by writing your own words. Now, I hope you're ready for some philosophy because I want to tell you what this means. And it's the, if you've heard it before, it's, I think, therefore I am. What does that mean? Because you can ask some people and all they can do is just reiterate the words back to you. They just kind of say the same thing. You know, someone might say, it means if you think, then you are. I mean, yeah, I guess that's true, but all you did was spin the words. It doesn't really answer the question, what does it mean? If you can't explain it in your own words, then you don't understand it. The idea hasn't stuck into your mind and you're not able to express it how you wish. However, if you did understand it, if you did get the message, then you'd be able to express it in a million different ways. You could use examples, you could use different sentences, different ways to express it, all because you get the main idea behind it all. And luckily for you, you have this powerful tool at your hands whenever you want. All it takes is a pencil in hand while you read. And as you go through and as you encounter these sometimes challenging ideas, you can just check if you get it by writing it. And if you find that you can't really express it in, in words, then it shows you that maybe you need to have a look at that point again. Maybe you have to go back and see, did I actually get this? And if you can write it in your own words, then you've just proved to yourself that it made sense to you and you proved that you understood it. And here's the best thing. If you do that frequently, if you get into the habit of doing that, it almost becomes effortless to face any book because even the thickest, hardest book is just a collection of points. At the end of the day, it's just made up of points. So if you can break that down into points and address each one by writing your own words, then you essentially can do anything. Of course, it takes time. Of course, it takes effort. And those books will still be difficult, but you have a way to deal with them and to get feedback on your understanding. You'll love the third benefit because it solves a problem that haunts readers. Writing your own words helps you remember more of what you read because you and I both know that there's, there's no worse feeling than finishing a book and not remembering what was said. 
not being able to recall the points and not being able to tell a friend what you just read. It's the most horrible, embarrassing feeling. But if you can make a habit of writing your own words, then that feeling becomes a thing of the past. And you'll find that you suddenly you can just remember so much more. And that happens because learning actually is helped by friction. When your learning is easy, when you just listen passively or you, you read something and do nothing with it, it's easy for you, but you don't learn much because there's no friction. By writing, you introduce effort, you introduce exertion. Like you actively have to think, you actually have to grapple with the ideas and work your mind. It's all an active process. You remember more because your brain is more involved in the process. So just by writing, you amplify your comprehension, you boost your memory, and you understand things better. And that's before we've even got to the second type of note system. And that's where the real magic happens. That's where the new ideas come from. And that leads us to the second type of notes, the atomic notes. And they're called atomic notes because they are stripped from the context of the literature notes. And don't worry, I'll explain what that means. So literature notes, the ones we just covered, are notes that help you understand the content of the book and help you extract the insight you're looking for. But atomic notes are slightly different because they're actually based on the literature notes, but they are stripped from the context. When you write these atomic notes, they're completely completely independent of the book or the, the blog or whatever you read. They can stand alone and they can explain themselves. So anyone who comes along and reads them understands what's going on without having to look at the source material. It's self-explanatory. And actually that's where the power of these atomic notes lies. Because they're independent from any material, you free them and you allow them to mingle with other atomic notes. And that mingling of ideas is how you create new ones. Because it's hard to create new ideas when your notes are stuck in the context of the book. Now, to be honest, this is quite hard to visualize and explain, but I think it's best if I show you an example. So what you see here is my literature notes from a book by Aeschylus, a Greek play, Prometheus Bound. So you can see here, I've just gone through the book and written things that interested me, things that stood out to me. And there's quite a few on this one, but you'll see there's a page count there, 28, page 30, page 32. And these are just things that stood out to me. And I was just writing the ideas that stood out to me in my own words and using some quotes. And of course, that helps you understand the book. This in itself is great. But then you go to the bottom and you can see here a bunch of linked mentions. And these are links to atomic ideas. Because these ideas all use the names of characters. They all use Prometheus did this, Oceanus did this, Hermes did this. And it's all in the context of the story. But atomic notes will actually strip them of that context. So if, say, I go down to the bottom and I found this one, this note, if I click on that, it will take me to a new note. I have some tags here, you can ignore them for now, but the point is this idea came from the literature notes, but it's completely unrelated to it. The idea is that if you enter power, you're harsh to maintain it, and that's what I've written here. Now, this idea was based off of the play Prometheus Bound because... When Zeus took over, he, he was harsh. But you can see there's no mention of Zeus here. There's no mention of him coming into power. This idea stands on its own. There's no link to the context. And that fact, that fact frees it up to connect to new ideas. So let's say I read The Prince by Machiavelli. The Prince has ideas that relate exactly to that, like how you enter power and how you keep your power. So if I read The Prince, I would have notes from that and I could connect them easily to this. And because this is not in context, it makes it so much easier to bridge that gap and to connect the ideas in order to make something new. And through using the atomic notes, by freeing them from the context, you create that chance for them to connect and to make new ideas. You can do this all on pen and paper, but the best way to do it, I think, in my opinion, is using a, a note-taking software, one that allows you to link ideas, using like the literal links you click on and it connects you to another thing. It just makes it so much easier to follow the train of thought and to see how ideas connect and you can just click and navigate through them. You can do that with paper, but it's more of a hassle to store things, to find where they connect and to organize them. And really that's it. That's the simple act of using literature notes to understand things, but then using atomic notes to create new ideas, to combine two, three, four, five ideas into something new and to put your own spin on it. Something that you can really be proud of, something that you can produce and share and show the world and be satisfied with. So I hope you can find a way to maybe apply something to your own note-taking system or to adopt it completely. And as always, of course, thank you for watching. It means a lot.